My name is James Frankel. Um, I'm going to be speaking to you a little bit about my experience. I am a professor of comparative religion. For a brief period, uh, my parents actually attempted to send me to a Hebrew school to learn more, but I was uh, not very comfortable there and actually got kicked out um, for asking too many questions. So uh, this is uh, this is probably my, my character and it has taken me, uh, brought me I should say, to where I am today, you know, as a, as a professor. Um, I think as a child I was always thoughtful and always wondered about the meaning of life and you know those basic questions of why we're here and where we're going, why we suffer, all of those things were always present in my mind even as a child. Um, but as I got older and uh, when I went to university, well I focused a lot more on my studies until I had a particular experience. You remember the grandmother that I mentioned before. Um, when I was in university, I was living in Washington, D.C., and I got a phone call from my cousin who was going to school in Maryland. It was a surprise visit from my grandparents and my aunt and another cousin, and they took me out for dinner. And I spent the evening basically just talking to my grandmother. And she said, don't worry about me. Just worry about yourself. Okay, I thought. And then I continued to walk with her to the car. I opened the door. She got in. I kissed her goodnight. And I said, well, I guess the next time I'll see you will be for Thanksgiving when I come back to New York. And she said to me, God willing. I said, what are you talking about? And he, he explained that she had a heart attack in her sleep. And of course, her, her final words to me, you know, were, were echoing in my ears. She, I said, I'll see you soon. And she said, God willing. And I said, are you okay? And she said, take care of yourself. So to this day, I mean, it was an unexpected visit and of course an unexpected departure for her. Um, and to this day, I, I can only wonder, you know, about the, the meaning of that, of that encounter with I my grandmother. some questions. I wanted to ask him questions about certain practices that that uh, are, are practiced in a Jewish home at the time of someone's death. And he told me, don't worry about those things. He said, that's just tradition. I said, okay, then how about this? In your sermon, you said that my grandmother, I don't know how well you knew her, but you said that she was taken by God. So where is she? And for that matter, where, where will I go? Where will you go? Where do any of us go and why are we here? And all of those questions that that well up in the human heart. And the rabbi, I remember very clearly, he looked at his watch and he said, I have to go. And I don't think that he realized how angry that made me. And I also don't think that he realized at that time that he set me on a, on a course that would lead me to where I am today. Because I became very interested in those questions. And, and at first I thought I would try to answer those questions um, paying respect to my grandmother's memory, I would try to find a Jewish community where I could answer those questions. But the communities that I found, and again, I was just 18 or 19 years old at the time, the communities that I found were not satisfactory to me. And I asked the question, which I had asked many times as a child, is God only the God of the Jews? There are only 20 million Jews in the world, and yet there are billions and billions of other people. God created them also, right? So I began to study on my own. I began to read the Bible. And that summer when I was in England, I was there for an internship, um, there were some Christians, some evangelical Christians who sort of approached me and social, wanted to socialize. Of course, they also wanted me to accept their, their faith. Um, I thought, okay, why not try Christianity? I've never really thought about it. And in reading the Bible, I came to, to develop a very strong feeling of, of love and respect for Jesus. But that extra leap that they wanted me to make to accept Jesus as my Lord and my Savior was not one that I could do. Jesus, for me, was more like a big brother. 
Jesus for me was more like a teacher. On my own, I studied other things. I studied Eastern philosophies, Buddhism. I read the Upanishads. I studied Western philosophies, uh, particularly Greek and Roman Stoic philosophy. Um, but nothing, nothing really was answering the, the profound questions that I had. Immediately I went up to my bookshelf where I had the Quran that was given to me about six years earlier by my friend Mansur. But since I started reading, I went to the beginning of the book and I just began to read. And I read and I read and I read until I fell asleep with the book in my hands. And the next day I read and I read and I read when I had some free time. And any time I had free time between classes, when I was commuting to school on the, on the New York City subway, um, I was just reading the Quran. And it moved me in a way that other books hadn't. Certainly in a way that the Bible didn't. The Quran's directness and the fact that the Lord of the worlds, right, the creator, as, it's, as the book describes the author, um, is speaking directly to you at times, very direct way, very intimately. It, it moved me in a way that I, 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 had not in, I had not felt before. And <clears throat> I can't tell you where or when exactly. I know that there were times that I would read it and sometimes I could feel, I could feel tears in my eyes and running down my face. Sometimes I would read it and the hair on my arm would stand up on the back of my neck. And I can't pinpoint precisely the time or the place, but at some point I think that I had realized that I was reading the words of God. Well, around New Year's of that year, this is, I guess, about 1990, uh, January of 1990, I was out with some friends from high school. We were having coffee and they were, they were just talking about what was going on in our lives. They asked me, what do you, you know, what do you believe these days? Because they knew me when I was a communist and they knew me when I was, when I went through many different phases as a young person. And they knew me as someone who didn't really believe in anything. So they asked me and I said, well, I, I believe in God. And they said, really, what God? I said, there's only one God. And they said, where did you get this from? And I said, well, for me, it was from reading the Quran. And they said, so you've been reading the Quran, so you must believe that this is the message of God and Muhammad is the messenger of God. And I said, yeah, I guess so. So they said, okay, let me get this right. You believe that there's only one God and that Muhammad is his messenger. I said, yeah, when you put it that way, I do. And they said, you're a Muslim. <laughs> I laughed. I said, I'm a Muslim? You're a Muslim. You're from Pakistan. I'm just a guy who believes in God. They said, no, you're a Muslim. If you believe that there is no God, but the one God, and that Muhammad is his messenger, you are a Muslim. And I was, I was in shock. I, for the next few days, had to think about what that meant. And uh, I contacted my friend Mansur, the one who had given me the Quran when I was 13 years old. He was at University of Pennsylvania and he was working in the, um, in the Muslim Students Association there, I, I, I think. I thought I'd had, I had heard that. And so I asked him if he could send me some literature, literature that might you know, in, give a, an introduction to Islam and also you know, the life, of a, the life and, and, and the requirements, I guess, uh, of, of a Muslim. And uh, he sent me a book or, or two, and one book in particular, Islam in Focus, um, I can't remember the author's name right now, but this book provided a very good introduction, not only to basic beliefs, but also to the five pillars of Islam. And I learned how to make salat. I learned how to pronounce the shahada. I learned how to make my wudu, all of these things from that book.